Hello, today we are doing chapter four, section two in algebra one. Our essential question is, how can you write an equation of a line when you are given the slope and a point on the line? Our last lesson we did slope intercept form. On this one, we are doing what we call point slope form. Uh, pretty much just listen to the name. If you're given a slope and an intercept, you'll want to use the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. If you're given a slope and a point, you're going to want to use the point slope form. And I'm sure right about now you're asking yourselves, gosh, I wonder what that point slope form is. Well, don't want to disappoint you. Here it is. If I were taking notes, I would probably hit pause and make sure you have all of this down because this is going to be an important piece of information. Um, you're, you need to have that formula down. So on this case, you're getting a slope and a point. What they have highlighted there in purple and green is what you would be substituting into the equation. And if you look at this closely, you're going to just notice it's a variation of the slope formula. If you divided both sides by x minus x sub 1, it's going to equal m, and that is the definition of a slope. So again, this is the point slope form. So if you didn't get it all, hit pause. I'm going to go on. So on this one, we want to write an equation in point-slope form, the line that passes through the point negative 8, 3, and has a slope of 1 fourth. Well, what I notice right away is they're giving me a point and the slope. As soon as I know that, I'm thinking point-slope form. So I write the equation down. y minus 3, and the 3 is my y-coordinate equals one-fourth, my slope, parenthesis, x minus negative 8, and negative 8 was my x-coordinate, and then I close that off. I will want to simplify that. Two negatives make a positive. Let's distribute. Oh, actually, we're not going to simplify that. If I wanted to, I would distribute that one-fourth and then add 3 to both sides. But unless they specifically say give it to me in a simplified manner, you don't need to. You can stop right there. All right. On this one, you'd have y minus negative 1, which is the same as y plus 1, equals your slope, negative 2, parenthesis, x minus 3, 3 is your y-coordinate. Go ahead, try number 2 on your own. When you're Hit pause when you're ready. Check your answer. Here, you technically get y minus 0. That's kind of an awkward thing to write, so that in this case, it is just y. And again, if you wanted to distribute, you can. I guess so I should look at those directions. They're saying write it in point-slope form. If they're telling you specifically what form to give the answer in, we do want to make sure we give it in the correct form. On this one, we want to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line shown. Well, they are telling us what form that it has to be in this time, slope-intercept. But if I look at this graph, I can find the slope pretty easily, but not the y-intercept. So let's find that slope. Difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. The slope is negative 2. And then we're going to choose a point. You can choose e either point. I would have chosen the 1, 2 as well because it's all po positive numbers. And positive numbers are easier to work with. So. There's my equation because I have a point and a slope. You plug everything in. y minus 2 equals negative 2 times quantity x minus 1. We're going to distribute that negative 2. 
Now we're going to solve for y, so we need to add 2 to both sides of that equation. So the equation is y equals negative 2x plus 4. My slope is negative 2, my y-intercept is 4. On this one, they want us to write a linear function with the values of f of 4 equals negative 2 and f of 8 equals 4. Remember, this is a fancy way of just giving us an ordered pair. My first ordered pair would be 4, negative 2. My second ordered pair is 8, comma, 4. So 4, comma, negative 2, 8, comma, 4. Now we can find the slope between those two points. The difference of our y's over the difference of our x's, and we get 1.5. If you wanted to leave it as 3 over 2, I'm perfectly fine with that. So now we have to choose one of these two points. And you can choose either point. It doesn't matter. You could choose 4, negative 2, or 8, 4. You're going to get the same answer either way. I would probably choose that 8, 4 because it has all positive numbers. So now we know a point and a slope, so we write down that equation. Plug in what we know. We're going to distribute that 1.5. 1 1.5 1 .5 times x is 1.5x. 1 1.5 1 .5 times 8 is 12. Now we want to solve for that y, so add 4 to both sides. And negative 12 plus 4 gives me negative 8. So y equals 1.5x minus 8. Rewrite that in function notate, notation. Take out that y, put in f of x. And voila, we are done. All right, take a second, hit pause. Try these three problems on your own. When you think you have the answers, hit the play button and check yourself. Hopefully you did well on these three. All right, here we have a word problem, everybody's favorite. The student council is ordering customized foam hands to promote school spirit. The table shows the cost of ordering different numbers of foam hands. Can the situation be modeled by a linear equation? Explain. If possible, write a linear model that represents the cost as a function of the no number of foam hands. So we've got five sets of data. 4 comma 34, 6 comma 46, 8 comma 58, 10 comma 70, 12 comma 82. So we need to find the rate of change. If the rate of change is constant, we can write an equation. So Let's find the rate of change for consecutive data pairs in the table. So 46 minus 34 over 6 minus 4 equals 6. 58 minus 46 over 8 minus 6 is also 6. 70 minus 58 over 10 minus 8 is 6. I'm starting to see a pattern. 82 minus 70 over 12 minus 10 is 6. So what they did was they paired them up, whatever it was next to, and they did the difference of y's over the difference of x's. And as long as you get the same number each time, they're saying that rate of change, which is the same as slope, is constant. So since the rate of change is constant, it's linear, and we can write an equation. Uh, it doesn't matter which point you choose. They chose 434. I probably would have chosen 1070 because that looks like it might be easier to work with. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, though. There's our slope-intercept form. And if you notice, instead of y, they're using c. Instead of x, they're using n. It doesn't matter. Plug in what we know, that ordered pair. Um, our y-coordinate would be 34 right here. 
our slope is 6. That's our rate of change. And our x-coordinate, which we're calling n, is right here, 4. Let's go ahead and simplify that by using the distributive property. And then add 34 to both sides. And you're going to get the cost is 6n plus 10. So there's our linear model. And you can go back and verify that other data points fit into that. And they do, so we have done everything correctly. All right. Why don't you take a second and try this word problem on your own. Hit pause when you are ready. Hit play, and let's see how you did. You'd have to check and make sure that it is a constant rate. It is. You get a slope of 42. And you're going to have to check that multiple times. You choose one of the points and simplify, and you get 42n plus 50. All right, that's all we have for today. As always, you are welcome to come into the math lab or I pass. See you there.